Musk has been cozy with Russian President Vladimir Putin for years, according to a bombshell report in the Wall Street Journal. The paper spoke with several current and former U.S., European, and Russian officials who confirm that Musk and Putin speak on a regular basis. Their conversations have ranged from personal topics, business, and geopolitical tensions. The article also reveals that Putin allegedly asked Musk to avoid activating his Starlink satellite internet service over Taiwan as a favor to Chinese leader Xi Jinping. U.S. officials raised national security concerns over the rumored relationship between the tech mogul and one of America's biggest adversaries. Musk, who holds top security clearance, has contracts with NASA and the Pentagon, a relation that would almost certainly be fortified if Trump returns to the White House. Elon Musk, Russian agent. I mean, it's concerning that he has top security clearance and contracts and, and has intelligence when it comes to our national security plans, uh, given Starlink, and of course NASA too is, is part of that. Uh, their, his, his relationship with his, uh, the NASA program. Yeah, I mean, it's concerning that not only is he having conversations with Putin, an adversary, but that he's not even telling U.S. officials that he's doing so. Well, Do you think so? I, I agree to an extent that it could be concerning. I don't think that this report is the bombshell that it's being made out to be. For one, I want to know more about the sourcing. We, he, we have several current and former U.S., European, and Russian officials. I want to know what several means. I want to know how many of each official. Is it one of each for three officials? Um, why are we relying on the word of Russian officials? That's a little bit concerning. And not to mention, there have been past stories led by intelligence officials in the national security state that have turned out to be wrong. 51 of them, of course, signed that letter claiming that the Hunter Biden laptop had all of the evidence of being a product of Russian disinformation. So, I mean, and also, of course, going back to 2016, they accused Trump of colluding with Russia to win the election. So I think people are very skeptical of these sort of Russia fear-mongering narratives that come out of the national security state. And all of that being said, the sort of smoking gun that they're trying to run with here is that Elon Musk must have acquiesced to Putin's request to avoid putting Starlink over Taiwan. But we know because the negotiations were borne out very publicly that it was actually Taiwan's decision not to move forward because they have a law that requires that any company that operates there has 51% ownership by someone in Taiwan, right? So Elon Musk obviously wasn't willing to cede 51% of the ownership of Starlink, and that's why the internet service didn't go forward, not because of anything that Vladimir Putin said. Well, he's been in conversation, according to sources, and one of them is, is Ian Bremmer. Uh, that is one source who's come out and said that he did have a conversation with Elon Musk in uh, he's the president of the Eurasia Group, uh, that he had a conversation with Elon Musk at a conference in Aspen. And this is after some of the sources, of course, our administration folks, our people in the Russian government. It's not as necessarily against Russian interest to, to verify this. But one of the people that Elon Musk has been speaking to is the uh, deputy, what is it? He's the deputy uh, chief of staff to, yes, de first deputy chief of staff. They have the first, second, third deputies in Russia, I guess, um, under Putin, Sergei, Sergei Kirienko, who... Uh, has been in constant conversation with Musk, but this is the person who put out 30 different uh, website domains to spread disinformation about Ukraine. You know, Elon Musk owns X, which is a huge facilitator of Russian disinformation, so much so that Elon Musk, this is very concerning, that he, he posted the Ukraine peace plan, a uh, Ukraine-Russia peace plan, which was almost identical to the one that Moscow uh, put out. It's one thing to say the national security state uh, was not able to provide enough evidence for certain things. But Russia doesn't necessarily need evidence to spread disinformation campaigns. It doesn't mean that they were behind the Hunter, lap Hunter Biden laptop uh, situation. It's that they were spreading it throughout the internet to cause divisions. And that's something that's part of their strategy. They find something that's true or 1% true, and they put bots and disinformation networks out there to sow division. And that's hurting our national security. I don't think you would you would disagree with me on that, that disinformation campaigns definitely influence folks? Uh, to an extent, although what happened in 2016 was we found out later that the extent of the so-called Russian disinformation campaign was wildly overblown. The impressions that they received on Facebook, for example, were much lower than we were led to believe. Um, and I think the other question involved here is 
what was Elon Musk talking to Vladimir Putin about? It's not uncommon for international business leaders to talk to international leaders as they are either implementing a service or selling a product to that country. We know similar things have happened with Apple CEO Tim Cook, as well as um, Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Meta, in talking to Russia, China, et cetera. Those conversations are not uncommon. The question is, were they talking about national security issues or things that are sensitive to the United States? And based on this Wall Street Journal report, it doesn't sound like they were because about eight paragraphs down, they kind of bury the lead and say that these officials did not indicate that there were any national security concerns from Musk's conversations. And you have to assume that every time he's talking to a deputy of Putin or even Putin himself, that those conversations are being recorded, right? They know exactly what those people are saying. Well, Putin does. I mean, it, we don't and have the, any... I'm, we don't have any knowledge that the U.S. was recording Elon Musk. But also, again, it's, it's, it's not necessarily, first off, they did have conversations about situations like Ukraine and Russia, and that's concerning. They had, such, uh, they had a conversation whether or not Taiwan chose to not use Starlink or not. They still had a conversation saying that, you know, Putin was asking him to not use Starlink above Taiwan because, as a favor to his ally, yeah, China. and I will say that claim in particular has less sourcing than the general claim that the Wall Street Journal article makes, that they were speaking on a regular basis. I believe that Taiwan claim only has one unnamed source, which is um, shouldn't really pass journalistic muster. Well, it's, Maybe it's, it was two, but I mean, I guess the question for me is like, do you have, would you have equal concern over Mark Zuckerberg going in person to meet with Xi Jinping and then asking him to give his child an official Chinese name? Um, also, Tim Cook had a very close relationship with the Chinese president. So I just I don't find this out of the norm with how we've seen other businessmen operate with international leaders. Well, those businessmen did not have high level security clear clearance, and they did not have uh, secure. They did not have contracts. Well, Facebook had military security. contracts. Not, not related to national. Did he have personally high level? And I would be against that too, by the way. Anybody who has critical information about our national security state should not be having conversations with foreign leaders and definitely not behind the back of the U.S. government. Well, Facebook did have military contracts. And in fact, they were seeking additional military contracts with China, if I remember correctly, which is why people were concerned about Mark Zuckerberg's apparent... As they should. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I think Apple has a relationship at least relationship. with the government to turn over uh, information based on investigation. So I, I... I just, again, it's, I don't care who it is. If you have a contract in the United States and you have national security clearance, why are you having conversations with foreign adversaries and not telling the U.S. government and simultaneously echoing their, their uh, positioning on key wars like the, the, the Ukraine-Russia war on your app? It's concerning. It's there's red flags all across the board here, and I think the Wall Street Journal does very good sourcing. Um, you know, obviously this went through months and months of speculation um, and criticism internally. There was internal debate, as we're seeing. Uh, so I think it's important that we trust that Wall Street Journal did their due diligence and got it all borne out two weeks before the election. All right. Well, we will of course continue to follow this and see if anything else comes out about Elon Musk's. Friendship with Vladimir Putin. We have a lot more topics to talk about on Rising right after this.